I was checking the. What? All right. Um, it's Advocate Television reporting live at CPS in Yolo County. Uh, what's your name and why are you here? My name is Tiffany. I'm here because I have three children. Um, I have two older kids that are 19 and 17, and I have an 11 year old who's the age of, uh, under the age of 12, and she is adoptable without her permission. And they can terminate my parental rights without her decision and, or say so. And this case is here in Yolo County? This case is here in Yolo County, and it's um, been a nightmare, a so, living nightmare. So your experience has been like a nightmare? My experience has been unreal um, and unjust. How are you coping? Are you coping? Um, I'm coping now. Um, at first, accepting it and, and realizing what they were doing, I was in shock. Um, it was a paralyzing in shock. It was like, I cannot, I, I cannot believe that this is a real courtroom with a real judge and real attorneys and my kids had to experience those type of examples. Yeah, I think it's it's unreasonable. You know, it's beyond a reasonable doubt with the abuse and the rights. And I believe the more parents that come out and start exposing it, I, I do believe change will happen. And I want to thank you for coming out here. What's your children's names, by the way? Um, Athena, Zeus, and Alana. Have you seen them lately? Do you get visitation? Yeah, well, my um, oldest daughter, she timed out, um, and she has her own apartment, and I do have a relationship with her, and um, she is under their advice and under the impression in order to keep um, paying her and supporting her AB12. She's not to have a relationship with me, but she's 19, so she does. Um, she has it, but her own attorney um, advises her not to give me access to the files or believes that I have no right or should have um, no business knowing anything about her. Uh, excluded me from her last couple of court dates. Said she was overage and I had no business there. Um, I'm her mother and I'm the only one who truly has her best interest in mind. Um, she's been misled by her own attorney and um, she wanted to be a sheriff. At the beginning of this, at the CPS case when she was removed, she was a sheriff cadet. And after she's been through and witnessed what happened to her brother and sister, she wants nothing to do with law enforcement because she doesn't ever want to be responsible for ripping the wrong kid out of the home. She's seen it herself firsthand. And um, it's really sad because she really, really wanted to be a sheriff and in the Marines or, or the military. And she won't have anything to do with it now. Wow, that's... That's that's crazy. I mean, you can imagine how many kids grow up want to be in law enforcement, and then they get older, and you wonder why nobody you know is in law enforcement because look look what's going on with them. Look what they're doing. You know? Yeah. Anything and, else you'd like to add? Um, yeah. Uh, you have to make sure that you um, hold the attorneys and the judges accountable. The judges and um, the attorneys are all on the same team. They're CPS, they're all on the same team. My attorney refused to point out or bring any knowledge to the courtroom about my daughter's abuse. How they, do you think we should, uh, what do we need to do to hold them accountable? Um, there's a lot of things, you have right? To put, you have to put in your complaints. You have to put in your complaints um, to, to the bar, to the commission. I have done both. Uh, judge McGuire is our judge. He is allowed to do whatever he wants. He. He words things to where it sounds good. The transcripts come out a little bit di way different than what's actually said in the courtroom. Um, they, you know, they don't tell you the truth. They told me um, I was going to get charged with general neglect and to submit, my son would be home in June, and two weeks later my daughter would follow. Um, I submitted, they did not return my son, and I just got my parental rights to my daughter terminated because she's under 12. Um, and I said, well, where's the warrant? And where's, where's the charges that you charged me with? To find out my a social worker lied to me and I've been charged with physical abuse and substance abuse. I never tested dirty once through this whole entire case. They would have me test sometimes four days a week even. And I never tested dirty, never. Ever and they charged me in the beginning with this 
and my, my social worker said nothing was substantiated. And I had my court date six months after my children were removed for jurisdiction. Wow. You're supposed to have it in 65 days. Um, it's, it's been a nightmare. My son has been through the worst. They have never given my children any type of services other than placement. No therapy. They refused me family therapy. Um, we've had, they've had zero. Not their, taking responsibility. No, not responsible. And for we're paying anything. them to do all this. Right. And that's a lot of right. money that they're getting. A lot of money. A lot all of over money. the country. And they've done nothing for my child, who has lost three years um, of education of his high school that he will never ever get back. They have thrown my daughter into a foster placement and we had the closest relationship with uh, supervised visits, reports saying how close we were and they decided to say that I'm detrimental to be around her now because they do not want me to tell her hold off for five more months and you have a say. Five more months she'll be 12 years old and they can't adopt her out if she says no. So they have completely cut me out of her life after having very positive reports from supervised visits. Now I'm detrimental. The judge made, made me leave the courtroom and I asked, before you make the ruling, Your Honor, you haven't heard from the three people that were present. You're getting a, a rewritten version uh, that's false from the social workers and you're taking it as valid. He said, and it was a very calm, no, it was quiet, I was soft-spoken, and he said, ma'am, can we please leave the courtroom for five minutes? I left and he made his rolling where he rolled my visits to be terminated and um, that I was detrimental to my child. He needed me out of the room, so truth was not put on record. Wow, that's crazy. I've never heard of a judge kicking out somebody from court and then making a ruling. He did. But I, but I believe it. It's real. And, and I'll get those transcripts. I have every transcripts of every court date. I'm waiting for those transcripts to come in still. That was the last court date I went to, and it was unacceptable. All right, thank you. And I also, um, just letting you know, I have also um, am charging the adoption, uh, Jennifer Heist, here uh, at CPS in Yolo County for perjury. I was able to obtain this. I had to fire my own attorney um, at the last hearing because she literally refused to um, advocate for me and to and to represent me and defend me adequately. Um, she was for CPS and against me, and I was able to uh, fire her at the last court date, so that gave me access to my discovery packets that I was denied and that was withheld through, um, from me throughout my whole case. I was able to obtain what the judge himself lied about on record, uh, the transcripts of his interview with my daughter who asked two questions. He said her preference was to stay where she's at and he had a private discussion with her. Had I not fired her, I wouldn't get the transcripts. And my daughter asked, how long is this gonna take? Um, and is there anything I can do to make this go faster? He says on record under oath as a judge, due to the, um, and he laughed, and I didn't know what he was laughing about. He kind of chuckled, you know. Um, he said, due to the child's preference that she discloses, what preference? She doesn't disclose anything. He even commits perjury on the stand. Um, so I'm charging, you know, Yolo County's adoption agency who suppressed my daughter saying she did not want to stop her visits. The social worker, the only social worker, stopped working two days after my case. She's the only one who logged correctly and honestly and said they had a, a conversation with my daughter in the car and she disclosed she did not want to quit her visit. She loved seeing her mother. She loved seeing her aunt. She loved her brother and sister. And the adoption specialist said, the child wants to be adopted and does not want to go home or see her mom. And I'm, I'm charging her with perjury. And they're looking into it right now because it's a felony. So now it's... So who do you report the perjury to? I reported to C, uh, CDSS, California Department of Social Services. Um, and I didn't just call one, right? And I sent an email. I sent an email to... Um, I want to say Kim something. Um, I, I just went on their website and I literally emailed and called every single department and every person, the head of every department, and I just made sure it was completely out there. So and you're still waiting on them to finish investigating? Correct. And I said, um, I am telling you this and you are a mandated reporter. So even if I'm not in the right department, you're still obligated to get it there. 
You're a mandated reporter and you're hearing this from my mouth. Well, thank you for saying that because now a lot of the viewers are probably going to go do the same thing because everybody's talking about perjury, but nobody knows what to do. So that's why I asked about who you told. But uh, thank you very much for putting the awareness out there and uh, we'll definitely be coming back doing more. Okay, and I hope to see you soon. Yes, thank you.